Welcome back and thank you very much indeed. Welcome to the news review segment of the show. The business finder says 12.2 billion Ghana cities pumped into major initiatives. It's money in the pockets of Ghanaians, government declares. Government to spend 85.9 billion Ghana cities in 2020 and government won't overrun budget in 2020. The Daily Guide. Supreme Court throws out Amidu, says the the uh, matter I brought before them is incompetent because it's been ruled on four years ago. 2020 year of roads after NDC three billion Ghana cities spent on legacy debt and we will not overspend in 2020. BNFT, government set 67.1 billion uh, Ghana cities revenue target for 2020. And uh, 2020 budget, we won't overspend, Uforiata assures. Government targets more FDIs, GIPC, to be strengthened to lead. And 20, 250 million US dollars secured for National Development Bank, which was announced yesterday in Parliament. At the presentation of the 2020 budget statement, the Guardian Times reports that we'll not overspend on 2020 election, Finance Minister assures. 2020 budget focused on consumption expenditure, Minority, cheers, cheers, greet 2020 budget. And the highlights are also there on the front page. The Daily Graphic says government to spend 85.9 billion. Wages uh, will uh, amount to 22.9 billion Ghana cities. Interest payments will be 21.7 billion Ghana cities. And the minority is disappointed with the 2020 budget. They call it the buy buy budget. They will explain. Government to roll out eight-point agenda, revenue mobilization tops list, and Supreme Court dismisses Amidu's application. My guest in studio, Mr. Richard Ahiagba, who is the brand new uh, executive director of the Dankwa Institute, and also lawyer Duji Tamaklo, who is a member of the NDC's legal team and communication team. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Good Congratulations morning. to you. Thank you, sir. You're a big man. You, you, you don't uh, have a problem. Yeah, you're a big man. <laughs> <laughs> to be representing J.B. Dankwa in, in present times. You're a big well, one. Well, I think uh, it's big responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, very humbling, and uh, all together uh, very exciting to take on a challenge that represents not just uh, uh, today, but uh, thinking into the future, something that predates uh, the independence of this country, to hold on to a thinking that is designed to build this country, this country for posterity and for us currently today. I think it's a big assignment and uh, uh, we invite you, uh, yourself and the media and all Ghanaians and those especially in the uh, policy space to join hands with us to try to do something special for this Okay, country. it's uh, cloudy out there. It's going to rain certainly. So be careful if you don't have to step out, uh, don't. I, I understand the rains have started pouring already. So uh, if, you, if you don't have any agenda out there, don't go out there. Don't send your children out there. Uh, if they don't go to school today, it's it's fine because it's raining. Keep them safe from all alarm. Eduji, how are you doing, sir? By the grace of the Almighty, I'm you're, doing you're well. Fine. The budget, yes, the budget uh, came to you well. Let me first congratulate my brother here mm. for um, the appointment, right, to the position of the executive director right. of Dankwa oh, I Institute. Um, I strongly believe that the role of uh, civil society groups in our democratic process is great. In the case of Dankwa Institute, they have taken a more political stance mm. to champion MPP activities and matters relating to MPP activities. And I recall vividly when the NDC in the past wanted a three billion Chinese facility, mm -hmm. the Dankwa Institute did everything in their power to ensure that we never got the full benefit mm -hmm. of that amount with all kinds of uh, criticism. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that at that time, when the Dankwa Institute engaged in those activities, they were pursuing a nationalistic course. Unless, of course, it was purely partisan, knowing that the benefit of some of these activities would inure to the generality of our people. Mm -hmm. I want to, and I want to hope here at this platform that he, now being the executive director, he would at least provide a certain thought leadership for Dan Institute that will move from the purely partisan you know, uh, 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 political. You, you haven't seen thought leadership from the Dankwa Institute's tables. 
That's why I'm saying that he will provide that leadership but for you now. you haven't seen that? I am very confident that he will provide Have that now. Have you seen thought leadership from the Danko Institute? No, the beyond past? the partisan politics. Okay. That's the difficulty that I have. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, a note here, we'll get into the budget shortly, but this is a response to a press statement uh, written by the uh, Judicial Secretary, Cynthia Pamelado, directing that all JUSAC members, the Judicial Service Association of Ghana uh, members who are on strike presently, should get back to work immediately. Now, the Executive Council are saying that, well, they have cited this press statement by the Judicial Secretary dated 13th November, and they respectfully disagree with the position taken by management, and their members will remain on strike until further notice. Did you, what's happening at the courts? Thank you very much. I think as you can see, I'm actually prepared. When I saw the, the note from the Judicial Secretary, right. I was thinking that uh, we'll form the basis for us to maybe go to court uh, this morning because I have a matter at the Labor Court. Right. And so with this uh, release from um, JUSAC, mm. I, I think that, and I've had to speak to a few of the persons within the leadership of JUSAC, to try to understand what exactly are the concerns. Mm -hmm. And they keep telling me that, listen, we used to have, you know, there are levels. Right. Now, we used to have, at the lower level, allowances paid to us. Mm -hmm. Until 2017, that those allowances were withdrawn. And we believe that the risk we go through in the courts and others, mm -hmm. we need those allowances to cushion us. Right. And then also, the view is that salary increment. Mm -hmm. At least every year you do performance you know, ratings, and then you can decide to. Okay. That appears not to have happened in this case. Okay. And the government is saying they should wait until 2021. Mm -hmm. And the people are saying that, listen, this is an election year. If you don't give us, okay, and you win, in the unlikely events, you get a second chance with this promise and you decide not to fulfill the promise, then we will be at a loss. So put something on the table. But if, if the government wins, that will mean that the promise will be sure. No, you are not getting the point. Okay. But you are telling them that you wait. Right. When I get my second term in 2021, then, then I will do this right. for you. More or less blackmailing them to give you a second term. And then people are saying that put something on the table now. Let's see, Philly, Philly. At least show some commit. At least somebody will call a commitment fee, so we can take it out from there. But you see, Hughes, R let me. Up for me yes, so we yes, can, Hughes. We can, maybe before we we'll even proceed, so that <laughs> Richard can come in. He is my brother. Incidentally, we all happen to come from the Volta region. Mm -hmm. I note from the budget read that page, in fact, table twenty-one. Oh, we'll get into we'll the get budget. Oh, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. No, like I wanted to we'll discuss no, no. budget. We'll the budget. Yeah. Council. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. uh, you, you want to take a bite on the juice? Yeah, yeah. Issues, uh, I, uh, I think I think he's he's spoken to it largely, except the part where it's as if there is some kind of uh, blackmailing political exercise that he is trying to talk about. I don't think okay. uh, there is there is really any intention. So to give them do their anything. money. Yeah, but the thing about it is that we we need to uh, do this according to law. From what I understand, the Labour Commission declares this as an illegal uh, uh, strike. So why do we encourage something like that to carry on? If the very people within the uh, judiciary or operating with the judicial service cannot abide by the, 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 mm -hmm. the rule of law, then really what are we trying to forward? So I think that they should comply go back to work, whatever negotiations uh, uh, they are engaged in, mm. allow the, that to unfold in the course of time. I think uh, that's the proper yeah, way Yesterday, two things. big cases in, in the Western region couldn't uh, hold because they were on strike. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not the best for, uh, for us. Absolutely all. not. Absolutely not. They must be example. I see, there's one thing I keep saying that when you work even as a newscaster or as a journalist or as a farmer, that you, that's your life's work. There must be some pride in that work that exemplifies itself in your conduct. But it must come with compensation. No, I agree. 
but your, your loyalty first and foremost, and that's the thing about professionalism, mm -hmm. is that your commitment is to that work because that's your life's calling. So there's some pride, mm -hmm. there's a manifestation of your life that mm -hmm. says that this person is a, is a legal service person or is working within uh, okay. this space to promote a certain mm -hmm. value. So when you are supposed to be the ones who cause all of us to abide by the rule of law, and you are conducting yourself in a way that the law says it's not appropriate, regulate yourself and go according to the law. Okay. So I think they should go back mm -hmm. and all other incidental issues will be addressed in the course of time according to law. And I don't okay. think anybody is set out to disadvantage okay. them. Okay. You, you, your side say they were disappointed or that they are disappointed in the 2020 budget that was presented yesterday. Tell me your initial thoughts about the uh, incumbum and uh, budget that was put out there. Yes, uh, once again... In thank Kosovo and incumbum. Yes, uh, once again... Um, I need to thank you for this platform quickly and like I started table 21 of the budget red and this it means a lot to me okay if you look at tab table 21 mm -hmm. it lists critical rules projects to be done in right. the country okay and it provides the regional breakdown mm -hmm. incidentally of the 16 new regions voter region was entirely taken out of the table. I find, it, to be yes, I find it extremely curious. I don't know whether my brother here would have an explanation why the entire voter region was taken out. And I'm making particular reference to table 21 in the budget read yesterday. And so when you have a situation where the budget, the national budget, mm -hmm. relative to the Rose projects, okay. you'd isolate or take an entire region out, mm. then the very foundation of Inkabum and Inkoso is already undermined. Would there cannot be Inkabum when you take the voter region out. Would you know out. why it was taken out? In fact, I, I have been trying to find out. Mm. I've asked persons in government what exactly is happening. Okay. In I've, fact, persons associated with government that I spoke to, some of them even ridiculed. They say, oh, by UNDC, you said you have done all the rules. Okay. And so, if Volta, why are you talking about rules in Volta? And they make reference to the NDC Green Book. I, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, checking, and, I'm checking table 21 now. Yes. It starts with the uh, Hafo region, mm. Ashanti, Bono, Bono East, mm. Central, Eastern, Greater Accra, Northeast, Northern. Uh, it goes to T, Savannah, Upper East, Upper West, Western, Western North. Indeed, there's no uh volta region in there i don't i don't know why it's maybe it's a typo don't you please think? please 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 i mean persons who call themselves persons who like reading and others okay. you don't want to give them the benefit that it could be a place of a uh, type Richard, Richard, do, but, we, do we know why there's volta region okay, is not yeah, captured okay. the roads uh, <laughs> plan because next year government says it will be all about roads yeah doesn't the Volta region need roads? The Eastern Corridor passes through there, for example. Yeah. The Eastern Corridor Road passed through the Volta region and it has been there for the past however many years. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what's the question? The question is that Table 21... We, we, we have had... Table 21 we have had doesn't a government. capture It doesn't capture it. Region. When was it captured? And if it was captured before, why is it still needed to be captured? Can today? I respond? No, no. You ask me, let me answer the question. Okay. So this thing, this kind of sectional parochial look at things is worrying to me. Now, the question here is, did that table capture all, every region? Did yes. it capture every region? It captured every oh. region but the Volta region. But Volta region. And you look in the rest of the budget. Has any road in the Volta region captured in the budget? Tell me. It has. There are. The, the thing, the number of roads... Uh, the whole dualization road, and then the bypass please, road. Please, but please, hold on, hold on. Please, please. Hold on, hold on. Please, please. You, 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 you asked a question, so let me no, ask. I didn't ask a question. Allow, it's, allow, only allow it's only fair. It's only fair. No, he's, no, you, you no, he's my brother. I can interfere. And this one, no, no, I think, you can't at this point, at this point I was yeah. even expecting a certain solidarity. Yeah. Listen. No, no, but the whole oh, dual carriage. No, hold on, just a minute. The whole dual carriage road was a contract awarded prior to 2016. Right. You come and say, look, you want to do an audit and stop but, the but road project for it? three years. So what are you talking about? It had featured. You came and decided that for whatever reason, you were going to stop that project.
to do an audit. As we speak, we have not seen the audit report. But we've been promised that the project will continue. No, so it has continuity. So don't come and create the impression that but nothing it, happened. But you see, that's uh, all that I'm uh, okay, saying. Okay, that's that fine. But you see, when you create the impression mm. that there's a whole budget presented and the whole region was isolated. Oh, but he per, read per, which, per, for table, that table, table 21. 21. Ah, that's but, not but, me. but you see, listen. It's not every page that talks about everything. That's why we have page one, two, and three, and every no, page table talks about. No, no, wait, 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 wait. It's wait, instructive. Hold on. Okay. See, so, you understand? So, Richard, my, my question is: table my, twenty-one my part is, of the budget or are you, not? Are you not worried yeah. that all fifteen regions have been listed? Yeah. And the the title says these are very important roads, mm -hmm. and the Volta region is not part of it. Are you not worried? Why should I be worried? And that's the question I'm asking myself. Why should I be worried? is the rest of the 15 regions not part of Ghana. Mm. Just this weekend, I was in the northern region, I was in the upper east region. <coughs> I drove on roads. Mm. Did, was I discriminated that I was from the Volta region so I couldn't drive on those okay. roads? So the title, so, the title of, the, of the, sorry about that, it says critical regional road projects mm -hmm. programmed for construction in 2020. Yes. Okay. Critical regional road projects mm -hmm. programmed for construction in 2020. Yeah. Is this to suggest then that there's no critical regional road project in the Volta region that must be captured in Table 21? Not, not at all. Not at all. You see, I was going to deal with some preliminary issues okay. to get to that answer. Okay. You see, we had eight years. Did we have table 21 that talks about critical roads? Yes. And those critical roads, did they include the critical road in the water region? Uh, but you know, be, you no, no, can I just, respond? No, 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 no. Uh, just yes, listen. Uh, like, yes, yes, listen. listen. No, no, my question. Listen. I mean, right, 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 right. where you and I come from, where you and I come from, he knows that even from the main about road, please. If you oh, okay, have okay, reservations, okay, note okay, them. You that's, that's what we like I wanted there. to give specific. No, no, don't give it. Okay. You, you see, not you see th this thing, we have to get to a point where we're thinking as Ghanaians. I was just telling you a story of how, how I travel from here to the northern <laughs> region. And he was telling me he does as well. Yes. You drive on that road, and you are a Ghanaian, you use the service. Yes. You understand? So for me, it is not about this is here, this is there, this is here. It's about developing this country holistically. So now, I, on the matter of uh, this Table 21, uh, table 21 mm -hmm. I have heard the Deputy uh, Minister for Finance, Honorable, okay. uh, uh, no, 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 uh, Edubwai, Edubwai. 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 Okay. talk about possibly an oversight in that case because prior to finalizing the budget, there was an instance where they were talking about the lots to do with the Eastern okay. Corridor Road, and there was about a whole co complete about 10 lots or so, and they agreed about four lots to be included. Mm. You understand? So that is a matter that can be verified. But I am saying that before even we get to that, let's move away from this sectional thinking. That position us to say that, oh, this is my region, that's my region. But you live in Ghana. Huh? The balance of the time I live in Accra, or the balance of the time he lives in Oti, Okay, doesn't mean that all developers should go to Volta region or go to Oti or if, to go if, to where. If, the point of if, the if matter the typo, goes. If the typo is is anything to go by mm. do you think honestly that the people of the Volta region deserve an apology from government for a typo which seems to have excluded them which is why questions are being asked this morning do they deserve an apology yes you know you see i find it difficult when we are having conversations boxed in this kinds of things we're talking about policy issue we're talking about developing a country Apology in what terms? The Constitution you says there can everybody be, must wait, have a piece of the cake. It's fine. Mm. But you look in that budget I was telling you. Is there anything in sharing of whatever cake it is we're sharing that has to do with the water region? And the answer is yes. But the minister... The forget minister about, says, forget about this. Oh, no, 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 please, please. Let's not do this. But you said it. I'm just... No, no I'm just telling you that it is the frame in which we discuss the thing that is relevant. Mm. I want us to talk about how this whole country will be developed. I cannot, for the life of me, say that go and do all the roads in the Volta region. When I live in Accra and we need to develop roads in Accra. Who, wait, but, but you're saying that, oh, there's no roads in uh, Volta region, so therefore government is not doing anything. No, I'm not that saying that. Is not, I'm, I'm not saying that. But that I'm, is the inference. I, I am saying that I have counted 15 regions in page on table 21. Yes. And I'm saying that there are 16 regions in Ghana. Yes. What could be the reason why government has critical 
roads yeah. for every region. Yeah. And the Volta region wasn't in there. Yeah. And then I'm asking you, and then you say, the deputy finance minister said it may have been uh, glossed over, it may have been a typo, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And then I'm asking you, based on that analogy, yes. Do the people of Volta Region need an apology? You say no. An apology for... And, I, and I'm saying that, and I'm saying that, if you, Richard Ahiagba, yeah. as a staunch member of the NPP, mm. uh, you know, a list is being compiled of the staunch members of the NPP who are doing very well for your party, and your name is excluded, and you ask questions, would it be out of place? But you see, you are, you are getting into a different realm of conversation. You understand? Which is totally unrelated. The bases are different. I am saying to you that if you take this budget and look into it, mm -hmm. are there things in there that advances the interest of the people of Volta Region? Mm -hmm. Now, moving away from that, what is the interest of the people of the Volta Region? Mm -hmm. The interest of the people of Volta Region is the interest of Ghana. So I am not interested in having a discussion that is sectionalized in a sense to say that, oh, because he didn't do that there, they don't like it. How can you think in those terms? Mm. Because when you take the budget at a macro level, mm -hmm. there are project and development specific, okay. okay, that are applicable in the Volta region. Mm. But I am telling you as a Ghanaian, I can live in any part of this country. Okay. I can live in Tamale if I choose to. I went to Yendi. I see the Yendi road captured in there. I drove on that road just uh, on Saturday. Mm. So for me, it is Ghana that is being so developed. No so for I really don't think okay. that that should be the basis for so analyzing this. Can so I therefore, proceed? I'm saying that perhaps the deputy minister uh, of uh, finance point that he's raised, maybe that is something that we would probably get feedback from. But short of any explanation to say that, Volta region is excluded. I don't see a basis where we focus on that at the peril of discussing a document that I think is transformational. You know, okay. I raise that issue because of how the finance minister nicknamed the budget. Okay. In Kabum, unity. And in Kosovo. And in Kosovo. Development. So my expectation was that there must be something more holistic. I find, and, and like you are trying to provide an explanation, this is a legitimate concern. You are saying that the deputy finance minister makes the point that it may well be mm. an oversight. It sounds curious, mm. but I want to say that if at the end of the day, remedial measures can be taken, mm. fair enough. But quickly, we have said that we have seen the 2017 budget read by Minister Kenoforiata. Mm. We have seen the 2018 budget. We have seen 2019. And we have seen that of, you know, the 2020 budget. Incidentally, if you go through all these budget statements, you will note something very significant throughout these four budgets. That almost all the major statutory funds that Parliament in its superior wisdom created to resolve specific problems have all been capped. And by reason of the capping, critical funding that we need in specific sectors mm. have been denied those Is sectors. it not to ensure fiscal discipline? No. There's no such thing. Because this administration has demonstrated that there's no such thing like fiscal discipline. Really? After oh, yes. So passing the law that you can't go beyond 5%? No. And you know what they have decided to no. do? They are borrowing on the balance sheets of statutory agencies. Do you get it? And so those statutory agencies are the one borrowing for government to consume so that you have a deficit that shows less 5%. Mm -hmm. But agencies like Cocoa Board are borrowing $600 million and the drawdown is within six months to be paid in seven years. They need the money now, 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 now. It's a stimulus package for the farmers. Nothing. For roads. Campaign finance. No. Campaign finance. But after the, after ah, the, why? After no, the cabinet no, use, no, use, 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 with, the, the, greatest, Kumar, no, with the greatest respect with you. My brother here knows that Cocoa Board had budgeted 55 million Ghana cities mm. to collect data about cocoa farmers. Right. <laughs> Where the two of us come from, Hohoe, cocoa farmers from Pampangwe, Ampeyo, Hamansu, right from Mkwanta, they have their data in CMB office in Hohoi. Mm. So when you say 
you need 55 million Ghana cities mm. just to collect their data, their farm size, and what have you. When you already have those data mm. in all the CMB offices throughout the country, obviously that's campaign financing. How sure are you? Look, you, that is why I'm telling you that. Because we have the fiscal uh, the enactment that says that limit okay. the fiscal council, right. checked by Dr. Polakwa, mm. government is now using a very dubious means outside the structure to use other agencies to raise the money for consumption. Richard, is that what you're doing? Well, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's dangerous. Use. So that in the books of government, mm. you will see deficit less than five percent but cocoa board within six months is growing down six hundred million dollars but but it's been explained what it's going to be used for that's exactly cocoa roads no. See, research you know what data it's, 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 seedlings, it's, i'm happy fertilizer. i am happy i am happy you have raised this issue mm. hughes i want us to have an opportunity myself and him he's ceo of a, a, a you know a, 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 a civil society right. group will bring the entire breakdown and do point by point analysis and by the time we are done you will see the great loot and share the dubious highly inflated projects under the 600 million for instance government says 200 million dollars is going into stimulus packages mm for cocoa processing company. Right. Go and find out the criteria. No such. When parliament demanded this criteria, they used their numbers and bulldozed the transaction through. Look, it's dangerous. It is our finance. OK. Allow Richard it to is not like we hate Ghana. It's our finance. Allow Richard to have. Richard, Johnny. he says you are, you are going behind the door to borrow on the uh, statutory funds mm. on their balance sheets uh, uh, Johnny, Johnny there's a there's a very instructive thing he says mm. that it's not as if they hate Ghana yeah. but I'm, I'm afraid perhaps that is the case <laughs> because if you look at this budget that was presented mm. and you see my brother here this morning talking about that same budget I heard yesterday mm. and I'm talking to you from a policy standpoint okay okay that that budget I saw and heard yesterday, and you talk about it this way, if you don't hate this country, I don't know what you He's hate. He's talking specifically about the Cocoa Boy ah, 600 you million it, uh, loan from the African Development Bank. Yeah, you understand. Uh, and, and he's talking about the fact that it is I heard yours. Him. Yes, I heard so him. what's your response? I heard him. But you see, six hundred. there is a way dollars. that you can still make your point, advance your political interest that is consistent with the truth. This is not. Which is the truth. The truth is that you have a government from day one, mm. okay, took economy that was in serious depression, found constructive, creative ways to stimulate that economy to grow. And that economy, from what we saw, was actually sliding away mm. and was creatively built. If you look at the the case of our economy to date is a textbook case. Now, I've always maintained the position that our, the management of our economy does not correspond to the scientific economic management because there's a lot of leakages and uh, maximum exportation, importation of things. So therefore, your planning really does not correspond to the models says, that you have. You're using 55 million to exactly to and the balance of it yes and and he what can't mean? he can't trust that I mean, you would no no i'm it. trying to paint a he picture for you is it, is it, the, the budget yesterday if you want to understand then you have to start from source where the economy was picked from and <laughs> how progressively it was built you see when we don't have the conversation that way that we'll pick a number and begin to argue about a number and after a while you realize that you are confused yourself because you're arguing about a number in what frame that, are you arguing about that a number? justify 55 million dollars for for collecting data do you know that the national oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah, allow me. no that's yeah, allow me. so you can do thank the comparison. you allow me thank you yeah. you see we sat in this country and the ndc for reasons of what they have done <laughs> they think everybody is doing what they did <laughs> okay we are different because if we're doing everything they did the economy would have worsened because they were on track to break and collapse this economy. We are okay. doing totally different what they are doing. Really? We are being prudent. We are being disciplined. Before you know, ma ma a, lot of, a lot of economic dis uh, uh, regime, mm. policies, regimes that have been introduced were not there when they were there. If we...
able to bastardize the economy the way they did, mm -hmm. we would not have created a fiscal responsibility rule his, to constrain mm -hmm. spending in this country. His, his, we wouldn't have done that. He's questioning yeah. the capping of statutory funds and that you need to keep the monies in the accounts so mm -hmm. the accounts look good yeah. and then you use it as a, 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 a springboard to go and borrow yeah. and come and use it for campaign. That's yeah. his allegation. What you do know, you say? You know, when he sent us to IMS, anyway, earlier he's talked about superior wisdom of parliament. There's no such thing. Okay, we have equal <laughs> branch of government. Parliament is not superior to the executive mm -hmm. or to the judiciary. Checks so let's balances. clear that. Checks yes, it's absolute. So that must be clarified. Now, the thing about capping, what is it? They brought us to IMF. And there was a regime under the IMF conditionality mm. that you must consolidate. And if you are supposed to be consolidating, okay. mm, you are supposed to be paying down your debt. You are not supposed to be making new debt. So you are supposed to be fiscally disciplined, which they weren't, because they were spending budget uh, deficit in a high 9% when they left office. Mm. So you have to employ measures that allow you to achieve the consolidation regime that was imposed on you by IMF. So when you are capping, that's what you brought us. When we have to cap anything, that's what they brought us. But you see, what happened? Mm. In the midst of capping, mm -hmm. this government found creative ways to spend. Now, my alignment with uh, the government as we speak from where I work from now is in terms of policy. <laughs> now, is it consistent with the center-right liberal conservative values to advance a policy objective the government did? Says you're being and I say, you're being dubious. Because, in, you see, in, in he's, not being, he's not being loyal to policy. He's not being loyal to policy. <laughs> okay. Because really, why? Because the NDC is confused. Because they don't know really what policy frame they believe in. Uh, they are just shifting and moving all over the place. But if you look at this government consistently, and I'm talking to you about how the determination of liberal conservative policies should be progressing, mm. that's exactly what they have done. So I'm saying that you are told to cap. So you are supposed to economy that was not expanding, the economy that was contracting, you were giving a policy regime. You are supposed to be expanding the economy, but you are told to contract. And you are contracting by capping your expenses. I, I is, and that was I what IMF, was imposed on IMF, us because of their mismanagement IMF, of the economy. IMF is gone. We keep being told that <laughs> the, the situation ha, has improved. Yeah. Why are we still capping statutory funds? For example, uh, the common fund, this was a common fund mm. for the third and fourth quarter, are yet to go. It is mandatory. People's school fees are in there, money for persons with disability, education fund, health fund, they're all in there. Mm -hmm. Why are we not releasing it and we are capping it? That uh, somebody would want to know. But you see, it's rationalization. When they were in office, we didn't pay student uh, trainee allowances, nursing and teacher trainee allowances. That is being paid. Okay? You're talking about capping? We yes, did. The students say they are paying more for utility and feeding. <laughs> but that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking no about the, the payment of that. Are we, is mm. it being paid? It is being it's paid. being paid. Now, so if they're paying higher utility, take away the allowance that is being paid now. Mm. What would they be paying? Higher. You agree? They, they, they contest if that. The they student, contest. The, the, the even their fees are even more. Oh, okay. The student groups say that, look, we used to enjoy free utility, mm -hmm. free food. Meals. Yeah. Now, you take that away and mm -hmm. you are giving us allowance and the allowance is not able to take care of these two. two so clearly you have put us in a tough position and we would I, like I, we would I, like I, the previous situation where we I, I have free food free water i free have electricity. I, I have not heard that i don't know where you're hearing that from okay. i am discussing they came to our newsroom okay uh, how many people and who came and yeah, don't don't does. forget don't forget there was a time recently that mm -hmm. people who were not nursing nursing students were assembled somewhere in alergo and were playing oh no no, no please please that is proven so let's not Richard, do that fair, i am telling you that students. there are individuals who mask them. themselves because if you see edwigy this morning how did you hold up hold on if you see edwigy this morning after after having yes this is our TV3 newsroom. Yes. It's a very credible newsroom. I'm not saying anything. No. I said these, these, I didn't these say people, your TV these room. These people <laughs> who I'm referring to yeah. have been coming to us for dumb years. By use. By use. Oh, uh, do you allow me oh, to okay. do my work, please? Okay. So it is not as if it's a group that just sprang up. Mm -hmm. they, that's their concern. Mm. What's your response to their concern? I mean, I don't see, I don't see the concern in terms of um, the the change in policy. Because I want to find out, were those same people, are they in, are they in school now? Yes. Okay. They were they in school before? 
that's that's what some of them so that is the credibility matter because you were not in school when you are now claiming that you were getting those things you weren't getting them mm -hmm. so what you're getting now is allowance so how do you now determine what has gone before mm -hmm. to have to have affected you in the present mm -hmm. So you see the credibility no, matter can, is no, right no, there. No, no, I so that. you don't have to explain. I they have said their case. No, 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 no. no, 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 no just hold on. Bite. You see, they, they have said what they have said, and okay. that is history. Okay. So we analyze from there. Mm -hmm. So really, what I am saying is that let's now let's just put those things aside okay. and look at what is empirical before us. Okay. This government has gone to a stint that this uh, the former government could not go. Could so we are not doing things they are doing. Okay. We are doing things different. That's why, Hughes, today you agree with me that this economy is growing. <laughs> that is by 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 yeah, it's, it's not it's not a, to agree with you. I mean the numbers speak to it. You see the the the, the upgrading of the country's credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. That is evidence of that. It's independent re uh, reference to what is being done right. So I am saying that look, short of any political consensus that we can mm -hmm. arrive at, mm -hmm. look at this budget and make an objective statement. Okay. If you want to say, Edward G wants to say with his party today that, yes, as for us, we have an alternative proposition mm. that will grow this economy. Let's discuss that. But what is put in here, there is no equivalent proposition from them, but to take the numbers and bastardize it, I think that you're doing a disservice if, to Ghana. Economy, and he if said- the, If the economy is growing on yeah. the books, yeah. how come we were not able to reach any of our uh, revenue targets that we set for ourselves? Were they over ambitious or I don't understand. Wow. Maybe you could help me. Well, you see, is because it if we are growing, it means we are getting more. If we are getting more, we should be able to hit the revenue target. Yes. But we haven't been able to hit a Sempa budget, a Juma budget, and now this one. But one thing you will agree in all these three budgets you've just mentioned, progressively the revenue outturn had gone up. Okay? So compare that to what happened in the past. It's a progression. Now, and also uh, by practice, you set your budget a certain, with a certain projection higher than what you really expect. Okay. So that's why you have actual and projected. Right. Okay, so that is consistent with budgeting. I am saying that I want a government that sets higher targets and work to achieve it mm. than I want that under, undercut the target and achieve it and thump okay. its, uh, on, uh, thump it, its it, chest it, it, and think that it's it, it, enough time. No. And I can, because you've been I can, I can no. understand no. because he's <laughs> coming from government. He needs time to no, confuse No, I'm not coming No, you government. need more time to no. confuse us on this issue. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Are you confused? <laughs> when you, fin when you, you fail confused? to read the thing, then, then, <laughs> then you know, you'll be confused. You know, you know the interesting thing. <laughs> Let me just use one case study. Okay. The road fund. Parliament decided that we needed critical money to resolve the problems within the road sector. Right. So around 2000, uh, somewhere in the middle of 2015, December, mm. we added, that December 2015, mm. we added 20 pesos by reason of ESLA onto the road mm. fund. Mm. As we speak, do you know how much that alone had yielded? That's 3.2 billion, billion right. Ghana cities. Now, what government under MPP decided to do is that in 2017, they capped the road fund mm. and took 800 million Ghana cities from it for other consumption activities. In 2018, they took 600 million. In 2019, 1.2 billion from the road fund. Mm. And this year, the 20. 20 budget, they plan taking another 600 million from it. Now, when you put it together, that's 3.2 billion. Now, when you use 3.2 billion, that's money you've taken for <coughs> other consumption activities. The end result will be the road network. You will not do them. And so, if you pick the 2018 budget, 2019 budget, 2020 budget, you see Boku. In fact, it starts from Boga Pomaku Boku Road. 2019, Boga Pomaku Boku Road. 2020, the same thing. And so, for almost three years, mm -hmm. the critical money you need mm -hmm. from the road fund to use for this critical road project, you have decided to channel it for other consumption activities. But if we have 3.2 billion sitting somewhere, why do we go and borrow 2 billion? No, so I am coming there. So road fund alone, the capping alone has taken 3.2 billion from the road fund. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Sino Hydro is giving us 500 million 
dollars. 500 times 5, assuming the exchange rate mm -hmm. is even 5 Ghana CD. That amounts to 2.5 billion. Meanwhile, the road found the loan by reason of the 20 pesos that we put and the other road fund levies, it has yielded this amount. So I am saying that in terms of policy, how can this be a policy? You are calling for a policy discussion. We are saying that immediately upon assumption of office, we are going to repeal the capping and realignment law immediately. Do you know something? Are you not scared that that, no. could, that could promote no. corruption? The no. <coughs> Do you know something? National health insurance levy. The money for national health insurance. You are using it to pay nursing training allowances. Was that the intention? You have capped it. And you are using part of the money to pay nursing training allowances. Get fund mm. money. That's what you are using to pay. Teacher training allowance, among other things. Meanwhile, you have left all the community day secondary schools, many other educational infrastructure projects in the bushes, the hospitals that we're supposed to be building, you have left all of them in the bushes because you want money to pay consumption. Look, from 2017, 2018, 2019, look at the budgetary allocation for government machinery. For the first time in the history of this country, the allocation, government machinery allocation, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, if you put it together, that's just the budgetary allocation for 2017 alone to the office of the president and for government machinery. So I am saying that mm. this cannot be a policy. Okay. This chop chop policy cannot continue. I, you are not seeing results, which is why you are complaining? No. It is not a question of result. We but, all but know. But what do you want to see? And, and this is it. Look, we all know mm. capital expenditure is what grows an economy and not consumption. But we know that our wage bill has always been big, don't we know? No, beyond the wage bill. <laughs> it didn't start I am, today. No, beyond the wage bill. I am saying that there are specific payment items in the office of the president. Go and interrogate it. Ex Look, your colleague, exceeds receipts. Yes, your colleague, deputy chief of staff, appeared before the finance committee to justify the budgetary allocation for the office of the president. Go and look at it. You remember the thousand and over presidential staffers and among others. This is where the consumption is going. The expenditure. Richard, Johnny. No, but he, he, no, he, says, he says you have to make your wallet no, one minute. and we can't no, finish. No, one minute so that Richard will come in. <laughs> look, Hughes, the difficulty that I have mm. in managing this economy, and which we all agree, there are structural issues with this economy. Structural, fundamental structural issues. Ken, Ken Faraja says this year was a good year. And you know Absolutely. why? You know why? Mm. You know why it's I mean, a good just, year? Just allow me and to... No, he wants to... No, no, no. no. Why, 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 why is it not a good year? It is a good year because of the family and friends. Okay, well, that's fine. Look, uh, Johnny... Is, is this year a good year? Johnny, absolutely. It's a good year. Absolutely. So how, how, does, we, this, how does the person who, because of the banking sector cleanup, lost their job... They couldn't certainly be saying that this year is a good year. Could absolutely, they? absolutely. My people are living I hear. In the you see, plan. you see, we, we, it was this year mm. that we exited the clutches of IMF, mm. a situation that forced us to be recipient of policy, mm. as opposed to be independent in our thought about our future and how we get there deliberately. We but hear yeah, a president yeah, that professes a, a country beyond aid, Ghana beyond aid. Mm. You cannot achieve Ghana beyond aid if you are being tutored, you are being tutored about what policy to implement in your own country. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the business cycle. Okay. Where, what cycle you are in, if your economy is expanding, you put uh, uh, policies to depress it. Mm -hmm. If it's contracting, mm -hmm. you put policies to expand it. Right. All right? The NDC. But is government spending enough for the for the economy to expand for private sector? Exactly. But, but of course, in, under the realistic, the realistic regime, mm -hmm. uh, what this government has done the NDC, based on what they are saying, couldn't have done. How? Because what he's saying... that was why they were voted <coughs> out. Richard. I agree. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. So, and so, I am so telling you... Tell Johnny, hold on. Hold how on. government intends to spend to expand the economy for the private sector, that young entrepreneur, yes. to be able to get in there and feel comfortable. Yes. So, so I'm, uh, is it, he, talks, he talks about so many things, and if you want to, uh, you <laughs> want to explain it in policy terms, it's difficult. Because he takes a number and then just argue numbers. Mm. 
Okay, but you hang, you take the number within a frame, mm -hmm. then talk about it. You see, he talks about if they win, they will repeal whatever capping and realignment. Yes. Right. And I am saying that that's the very reason why they will not win. Because that is a, <laughs> introducing the regime of recklessness that what led us to IMF. No. Wait, that, that is exactly, I'm afraid. I think that Ghanaians who are watching and listening this morning for my brother to say this should shrink. No, you've gone for sign oh, no, 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 they are small uh, for cozy in, in, in there. I mean, persons with disability, and I go out a lot, I see them. Most of them, you know, children with cerebral palsy who need educational support yeah. would have to sometimes wait three, four, five, mm. six months before they get one. And that's a problem. It's because of the capping. Uh, do you know that it's still under this capping regime that you are able to expand school feeding? Mm. You know that it's still under this capping regime that you are able to expand LEAP mm. in all 260 districts to cover or affect about, I think, about some 400 and mm. north of 400,000 households. Okay. So what is it we're talking about? It's about rationalizing and spending in ways that advances the interest of the economy. Look, we inherited an economy that was created by the NDC in depression. So you have to do with what the, uh, the, the resources you have, you have to rationalize. Like you sit on the show mm. and you have to review these papers and the papers you have to review, the headlines, mm. are the ones in front of you. But there are other ones that are not here on the table. Right. But you, all you have is what is on what the table. Is on the table right? That is the situation. I am saying that this government has done what uh, this NDC government is it, couldn't have is done. It, look, our road fund alone gave us 3.2 yes. billion. We, could, we, could, we shouldn't have gone to go and borrow for Sino Hydro because we could have gotten money here, Ghana beyond you cut it. And, 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 and who is saying that? It. Uh, Edu Edu G. G. No, but it's a fact. Wait, 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 wait. Edu G from NDC. Mm. Oh. Eight years. <laughs> what happened? Was there a rule fund in this country? Yes. Was there a rule fund in this country? And what yes. did they do with it? The major road. Oh, please, you hold on. <coughs> then which other major road are you talking that is not captured in 21? No. If you say, I well, no, 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 please, 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 stop this. Stop this. No, 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 it's not friendly <laughs> when you are just bullying. The <laughs> point <laughs> I am making is this, that if you say road but fund... You are, you are bigger than how can you bully? Oh, but you never and, seen and, small and, macho and before. And the viewers are surprised. You never seen small macho before. So here's the thing. The NDC has no moral right. In fact, the pain of Ghanaians today is blamable on Edwiji and his party. This government is taking us from the pain they put us in and gradually moving us out. That's why he doesn't want us to discuss the budget from one step where we took it in 2016 to where it is. Let me take a little no, bite on agree. No, no, let me, let me take a little bite. And, and ask you Richard, agree. Richard, so the, the finance Hughes. minister Hughes. said that uh, he mentioned uh, jobs that have been created in the agricultural sector. Yeah. And he's mentioned also how money has been put in the pockets of people through yeah. the planting for food and jobs. Absolutely. But we realize that when Nigeria closed their borders and Ivory Coast as well, our market suffered. If planting for food and jobs is a real success, why would we be crying, uh, hey, 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 when Nigeria and Ivory Coast will close their borders? Because it appeared we have imported uh, tomatoes, onions, yam, everything. So what is planting for food and jobs planting? Uh, I, 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 and then there's also planting for export and rural development, bed. Yes, so, for export. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I cannot agree with you when you talk about we, we import yam and those things. We don't import them. No. The market women themselves said it. I, they said they bring them mm -hmm. in from those countries. So from now where? that the borders are closed... I was it is just I guess, let's find one of the tapes and play for, yeah. for Richard to, yeah. Yeah. to watch. Well you can play them. But I'm telling you, I just came back from the northern region. Mm? Everywhere I went I was giving yam. I know uh, the the places I was giving yam, they didn't go buy from Burkina Faso okay. anyway. I recently this year, I think about three months ago, was in OT. Mm. I saw a yam that was harvested, just fresh yams were harvested. On the stretch from uh, Akusumbo toward Volta region, you see yams harvested. They were not imported. Okay. So the point of it, of this, is propaganda, and I want you to understand okay. it. No. But the truth of the matter is, planting for food and job has done tremendous good. Mm. And I think that we need to continue.
Look at this. The 745,000 jobs that the sector have been created me, has been questioned Hughes, by... Let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. And I will say this and he can come. He can get the rest of the time. I'm the saying... Time finished, yes, fine. Oh, thank you. Hughes, but I'm saying... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hughes, I'm saying so that fair. the ATS... Yes, wait, wait, we are not supposed to keep... Oh, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> the, 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 take the ATS of NDC. Uh, Hughes, seriously here. You're using take, my life. Yes. <laughs> take the, a, the ATS of NDC mm. and then let's just take one second to think about any policy okay. that they can talk to, and then you can analyze that policy and say, well, if A, B, C, D is done right, that policy can arrive at this. Zero. But in the three years of this government, you have policies that politic, uh, policy people can sit and say, well, this policy has this objective, this policy so, can achieve so, this, so the NDC, and that is why I am telling you so that... The, so the NDC is the MPP standard of success. Is that yes. No, 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 no. I'm talking yes. about policy development of a country. Okay. And the standard is global, not NDC. Okay. NDC cannot be a standard okay. because they don't have policy okay. propositions to be debated. Yes. So that we don't keep yes, my lady. But that is why so that talking? we don't keep <laughs> my lady. So why are you talking? <laughs> but the point is that is it not curious <laughs> that today yeah. TV3 live streaming of this very show, mm. it is costing you more in data bundle than wow. ever in the history of this country. My brother says you should applaud them for it. When you have a show like this, you make access to people to partake in our <laughs> governance process. So when you make it difficult, mm. more expensive for said programs, even through data, okay. you say we should applaud you. Thank you. Christophe, right. welcome back. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not following you. Because All right. First one says... All right. Good morning, Johnny. Yes. Are we going? Good yeah. morning, Johnny. I'm so surprised that a pure Voltairean like Richard is not disturbed when his own region is left out of the 2020 budget. Richard is defending his government. So why is Richard into politics? Is it not to influence developments to his people and Ghanaians as a whole? Richard, op Richard, open your eyes and emulate your Achim colleagues who are always bent on sending everything to the eastern region. That's from Abbas Wanwana from Wa. Please kindly t ask Eduji um, Tamaklo to tell us one major road that was completed in eight years of the NDC in the Upper East, Upper West and the Volta region. Just one major road. Inusa Fuseni, who was the Minister of Road, couldn't give one road which was completed in Volta, Upper East and Upper West for eight years. What, what a shame from Akosumo uh, in Kukurintumi. Alaji Hamza from Pig Farm says, Johnny, please tell Richard to stop this act of insulting the intelligence of Ghanaians and credit us with some level of respect. Richard should be aware that government and leaders are elected to come and solve our problems, but not to come and explain our problems to us because we know the problems already. The MPP is always behaving as if they are the only political party mandated by God to rule this country and no one else. This act of arrogance and insult must stop now, and I mean now. Mm -hmm. From Julius um, Agahoa and Tahiru Asawase, um, budget theme of the NPP in 2017 was showing the seeds for growth and jobs. In 2018, putting Ghana back to work, 2019 was a stronger economy for jobs and prosperity. 2020, unity and prosperity. Upon all the big themes, nothing worth um, of worth came out of them. Follow fellow Ghanaians, our dear country is at the crossroads and we must rescue it together. Hashtag 2020 challenge the bad um, change. Okay, good morning, TV3. Please tell Nana Ado that he should stop complaining and work. Uh, and work. Ghanaians are fed up with him. Come 2020, we will show him red card. That's from Kaka in Tamale. Good morning, TV3. Johnny, tell the NDC man to stop always engaging himself in propaganda with the budget for 2020 and allow the NPP man to tell us the real truth. George from Kumasi. I'm Dr. Um, down blow from Brimsu Apewusika. Uh, that would be our last comment for this morning. Yesterday's budget was one of MPP's campaigns and propaganda messages. The finance minister was just talking and praising his cousin Nana Akufuado and also talking about their so called fake achievements, which only their family and friends' governments are seeing. All right, and that's, that's the last comment for this Thank morning. Thank you very Hashtag much. Bye bye. Budget. Anthony Nukpen, who sends this, he says, good morning. Uh, please ask Richard uh, that the national population census is costing us 45 million Ghana cities. So how can County Oli Koko farmers 
cost us 55 million. Uh, he's curious to know what chop, the chop. mathematics is. And Honorable Abdulaziz, uh, MP for Mion, says Tamale Yendi Road captured for construction and dualization has been captured in the 2017 budget, 2018 budget, and 2019 budget, and nothing has been done on that road. It's also been captured in the 2020 budget. Uh, well, gentlemen, let me, let me answer uh, yeah, 45, Anthony, 55, yes. Yes. Anthony's uh, question. Yeah, but you know, no, 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 let me allow, answer allow him, oh, the question. Is yours. Oh, I thought, I thought, look, uh, uh, look, <laughs> Sifton Switch Limited, a contract was given to them for 4.6 billion okay. in this country by Edwige's government, and Benu's government. Is that the answer to I'm telling you, I'm te yes, I'm telling you that. 4.6 billion. Is that, that same that, contract. Is that wait, wait. I, I'm giving you a fact. Uh, you remember to, the, to the government. Wait, wait. The, you see, the same contract was that performed under this base. government for 4.5 million. Okay. So, so that explains that this government is not one so, to so how misuse. Do you, how, do you, how do you explain 45 million for national census, counting over 30 million people, and 55 million for counting job, job, less job, than job. 6 million? I have just explained job, to job. you. 4.6 billion. Chop, chop. So that's the answer. Yes, to that tell you that. To no, 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 not to compare no, Nicholas, no, but no. to tell you the character of a government. Okay, thank you. The character of a government that, that, that is committed to the and legal the team. Press. And Richard Ahiagba is the executive director of the Dankwa Institute. Thank you very much the indeed.